Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corum and Ken Shreve here with a breakdown of the action in today's session where we saw a lot of carnage in the market and with Fed Chair Powell saying that taming inflation is, quote, absolutely essential. Yeah, it was uh, kind of the selling today felt uh, a little different than uh, what it's felt in, in recent weeks. I mean, we've we've noted uh, all the distribution days that we've seen in the uh, uh, NASDAQ and the S&P 500 since uh, the end of March, uh, basically. So that just points toward institutional selling in the indexes. And we had another day of it uh, today. But boy, the percentage uh, declines among uh, certain certain stocks, uh, airline stocks uh, uh, did well. That was uh, a rare bright, bright spot, but most of them gave back, uh, you know, early gains. So tough session, but uh, we'll take a look at three stocks today. Uh, good earnings report from Tesla, not uh, not good enough. Stock gave back a big uh, pre-market gain. We'll take a look at Tesla's price action today. Also take a look at Marsh and McClellan in the uh, insurance sector. Uh, broke out today, held above a buy point, and finally Avalon Bay, an apartment REIT uh, that is uh, setting up. Sounds like a plan, Ken. Yeah, those uh, latter two sound like for safer areas uh, to be analyzing. Uh, yeah. So we'll check, it, we'll check it on those charts. But first, let's take a look at the major indexes. So the NASDAQ today down about 2.1%. Uh, we have the S&P 500 down 1.5%. The Dow off by 1.1%. And the Russell 2000 down over 2%. So Ken, it looks like some clear resistance here uh, for the NASDAQ at that 50-day line, which has converged with a 21-day line, but a uh, big downside reversal, undercutting recent lows, uh, looking pretty bleak at the moment. Yeah, well, this was uh, discussed on IBD Live uh, this morning. We were kind of saying, well, you know, a really a really good session here would be to see the market hold these gains and maybe strengthen into the uh, close and get some volume. But uh, as soon as the NASDAQ composite came up to its 50-day moving average, sellers uh, knocked it uh, sharply lower. The sell-off today really wasn't... Um, uh, because of the Powell uh, speech, you know, the market really started to turn lower during the f uh, during the first hour of uh, of trading. So what Powell said today, you know, he basically said that a 50 basis point uh, rate hike is on the table for May. Well, the market has already uh, priced that in, and it's, I think it's already priced in another uh, 50 uh, basis point hike at the at the following meeting. So we know the Fed's behind the curve. Uh, the 10 year yield was up again today, six basis points to 2.9 percent. So um, you know, just a, just an ugly, uh, ugly session. Uh, the Nasdaq uh, got resistance right where, uh, right where we thought it, it might, and um, I think the same uh, for the S and P 500, which also got uh, turned away at a key level. Yeah, that's right. So we'll go there. A uh, big downside reversal for the S&P with resistance at that 200 day closing below its 50 day moving average. So with the, the decline of about one and a half percent, it is still holding above its recent lows. But uh, if we do see continued weakness, we could see the S&P approaching uh, levels that it saw on that key follow through day. So it's really given back uh, a lot of its gains. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, we, we haven't seen, you know, really violent uh, downside volume behind the selling. You just look back over the recent down sessions for the S&P 500. A lot of these declines have come in uh, in below average volume. But anytime, you know, uh, either the NASDAQ or the S&P 500 uh, falls in, in higher volume or a meaningful percentage decline in higher volume, we will count it as a, as a distribution day. So S&P 500, you go back to, I think it's uh, the, the end of May, uh, where it suffered its uh, first distribution day. It was actually on May 31st. And then from that point, uh, we've had five more. So, you know, it's a market under under distribution and, uh, you know, weak market eventually takes just about everything down with it. So not much was uh, not much was spared today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, March 31st, that distribution day. Yes. Uh, but we knew what you meant, Ken. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the 10-year Treasury yield, 0 TNX. So yields up again here today, continuing this rapid ascent with, at least for now, no end in sight. 
Uh, yeah, and in fact, uh, you know, the yields uh, the yields were moving higher before uh, Powell uh, spoke today. So again, his comments uh, uh, really didn't uh, spur a, a big move in the yield. You can see the the, the yields uh, backed off highs a little bit, but this is just a, a torrid uh, uptrend, and uh, the the bond market is uh, certainly pricing in aggressive uh, rate hikes uh, by the Fed this year. And I mean, to me, you know, May is going to be a no brainer 50, uh, 50 basis point hike. And I think the market is um, starting to think that uh, we could see more uh, 50 basis point mm -hmm. hikes after that. And, you know, typically rising interest rate environment is, um, you know, is not going to be not going to be good for the stock market. Well, Ken, uh, sounds like don't fight the Fed is a saying for a reason. <laughs> Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. So uh, you know, at this point, we're just uh, we're just kind of watching very weak uh, technicals uh, in the market. I mean, we'll we'll be able to tell signs when it starts to starts to strengthen and maybe uh, things start looking a little better. But uh, for now, after today's uh, distribution day, uh, hopefully people have been you know trimming some uh, positions. I know on leaderboard today we uh, uh, we uh, we trimmed our uh, new core position, which uh, surged early on uh, on earnings, but closed in the bottom. Bottom half of its range and uh, very heavy volume, so showed some showed some stalling ac action today. So we trimmed uh, that position, held on to a little bit, but uh, you know certainly should be playing defense uh, for some mm -hmm. time now. And uh, I think today was just another reminder of that. Exactly, have those sell rules in place and be ready to act when you see them. Okay, right. let's let's take a look at Tesla. As mentioned, uh, an, an initial gap up for the stock in reaction to its earnings report, up some 10% in the early going. That gain faded to some 3.2% by the end of the day with heavy volume, of course, uh, behind the action here today. It's still right around that 1,000 level that's been a, kind of a battleground so to speak, for the stock. But for any bulls out there, uh, a disappointing close here, no doubt, for Tesla. Uh, yeah. And uh, listen, people might have been expecting a, a, a very good earnings report. And it, to me, it seemed like an excellent uh, report with uh, revenue and Earnings uh, accelerating from uh, mm -hmm. from the fourth quarter, uh, good growth uh, there. Their uh, their profit uh, profit margin was uh, was very good as well, and uh, you know Tesla was up up uh, up very nicely. And we were thinking, well, maybe we want to you know increase this uh, position on on leaderboard. Uh, but we uh, we we sat we sat tight and um, uh, didn't do anything, uh, which was a, which was a good idea. But uh, you can mm -hmm. see Tesla gave back a, a pretty big gain today. Yeah, so uh, that just goes to show you the dangers of getting excited right at the open when you see a stock up 9% on earnings, uh, especially in the current environment and the area of the market that Tesla is in. Have that patience. Uh, look at the intraday charts. See, I know you were talking uh, earlier about uh, various stocks, seeing how the action plays out throughout the day for at least half the session and then reassess at that point instead of being quick on the trigger. Yeah, I mean it's it, it, it's pretty it's pretty rare. Uh, I mean, you know, some, sometimes when a stock opens, uh, you know, volume is uh, is is so heavy, and you know, you have a, a good feeling that that gains are going to hold. But we're in a very you know choppy, right. unhealthy market right now. So you know, it wasn't surprising that Tesla was not able to hold these gains. I mean, the selling really did pick up the pace, and it, it ended up being an ugly session. But Tesla overall, still to me, looks like a stock under uh, under accumulation. But uh, you know, there were sellers in the stock today knocking it off uh knocking it off highs all right well maybe just needs a little bit more time to catch its breath after that a strong run-up in uh mid to late march and now let's take a look at mmc of interest today an insurance broker breaking out of a cup with handle in uh, Wednesday session and following up on that gain today on earnings uh, with a report showing acceleration on the bottom line, well, a little bit of, of a slight decline on the top line growth there, but investors liking this report. Yeah, and I have to say the stock uh, held up relatively well. It got pulled down uh, late with the major stock indexes, but it's uh, you know it's pulled uh, pulled back into that uh, five percent buy zone. It got right to the top of the uh, buy zone when um, uh, when it was at its session high, but it has uh, pulled pulled back and a nice uh, nice breakout today. I mean, this is not a, a turbocharged uh, growth stock, uh, but it does have a composite rating of uh, ninety four, pretty decent uh, annual earnings estimates. Uh, you can see earnings and uh, uh, well, 
uh, earnings uh, accelerated a little bit, but uh, sales growth decelerated. So, uh, but this is again the insurers uh, have been showing uh, relative strength for for some time now. Generally speaking, a higher interest rate uh, environment is good for many stocks in this uh, sector. So, uh, Marsh and McClellan, uh, you know, could end up being a, a safe a safe haven here. Mm -hmm. Pays a pays a, a you know a little bit of a dividend. Uh, so, just another one of these dividend payers that's uh, that's working in this market. Yeah, it looks like the yield sits at 1.2% right now. And we've got that RS line blue dot on the weekly. Uh, even though it is squarely in that blue buy zone, it is uh, almost 10% above the 10 week line. So in this environment, investors need to be careful when they are buying into strength, even when a stock is in a, in a proper buy zone. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is a, it's a it's a nice looking uh, it's a nice looking base. You can see uh, some nice uh, accumulation as the uh, right side of the pattern formed, and then that one down week uh, last week that was enough to form a little handle where the last uh, remaining sellers got uh, got shaken out, and then you see the weekly uh, performance uh, so far this week. Uh, good volume behind uh, the move, so I think the weekly chart looks uh, looks uh, looks pretty good. Okay, and a REIT to take a look at is AVB, Avalon Bay. Uh, we've been talking a lot about REITs this week, Ken, a lot of interesting movers, and Avalon Bay among them clearing a trend line on Wednesday and following up on that gain today. Yeah, I mean, you could you could call it maybe a laggard in the group because some uh, some REITs have uh, have already started uh, moving, but uh, the REIT group is uh, is very very large, and uh, Avalon Bay is uh, you know they operate uh, apartment uh, uh, communities across uh, across the country. But uh, nice uh, setup here. It tried to tried to clear a double bottom base. Uh, you can see here it wasn't much of a breakout. Uh, effort a few weeks ago, but the past uh, two weeks it kind of drifted, uh, drifted lower, uh, moving nicely again uh, this week. So to me, uh, looks like it could be uh, one of many REITs uh, that can uh, that could uh, potentially outperform in, in coming weeks as uh, you know market tries to, you know, uh, I don't know when tech stocks are gonna are gonna come back to life, but it seems like it could be a little while. So uh, mm -hmm. the REITs uh, could 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 provide some uh, staying power and uh, additional leadership. Yeah, speaking of uh, not knowing when tech stocks are going to come back, uh, just really, really quickly, an example of that, we thought that the security software group was the one area that was resilient in technology. But right when we saw a breakout from Fortinet, a big downside reversal today, uh, so sending shares lower. So this was definitely a disappointment today and indicative of the weakness in technology. I mean, there was weakness all around, but uh, this did not look too good by the end of the day, Ken. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an excellent point. And uh, to me, a, a price action like this, where you have a, a very bearish outside day, where the intraday high today and the intraday low uh, was was you know much much higher than the prior session. There wasn't a lot of volume behind the decline today, but this price bar just just really uh, to me makes makes the pattern uh, tough to interpret at this point. Yesterday it looked fine, holding mm -hmm. near highs near that three fifty two ninety eight pivot, but the volatility today uh, really mars. Uh, really mars the technical picture at this point. It definitely does. All right, Ken. Well, thank you so much as always for your valued perspective. And we will be back tomorrow morning with more on IBD Live. So make sure you join us. We have a special guest, George Chatuk. And he, <laughs> I'm going to get one. his... I'm going to get his name right tomorrow. Don't you worry, everyone. And George, if you're watching this, I apologize. Hey, my name's a little tough, too. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see everyone tomorrow on IBD Live. George, he's a longtime IBD guy uh, and past winner of the U.S. Investing Championship in the uh, professional uh, category bracket, what have you, and uh, looking forward to getting his insights. He's also been on our podcast, so it'll be great to have him on this show. Make sure you join us, investors.com slash IBD Live. We'll see you then, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow after the close.